Anyone here hate math? Because it seems like a lot of people hate math. So much so, in fact, that I've heard they're thinking of taking the M out of STEM. Because whenever you see something promoting STEM, you see a lot of science, technology, and engineering, but math is nowhere to be seen. So when people go to actually learn about STEM, they see math and suddenly decide that STEM is actually not for them and that they're going to go do something else. I actually used to hate math. Um, back before I learned about all the interesting things you can do, I was in the position of learning formulas and computation without really having a good understanding or purpose. And without a purpose for something, it tends to be inherently boring. Many of the classes that promote or that are marketed as teaching math that don't actually teach math. They're um, really teaching notation and computation, but they're, that's only a small part of math as a whole. One way to think of it is you go to a class where you're supposed to learn how to build a computer. So you show up, and there's a bunch of parts on a table labeled A, B, C, D, and E. So um, then the instructor tells you, OK, connect A to B, and connect C to D, and then connect all of them to E. Now you have a functioning computer. But you never actually learned what those components are and do, how a computer works, or what a computer even is. And this is often what happens with math classes. People learn the notation and computation behind the math, but they don't actually learn the underlying uh, like, um, purpose behind it or how it actually works. And as a result, a lot of people think you have to be a genius or something to be able to do anything with math and um, are really versed to it. But that just isn't true. Like, if you go to YouTube, there's a lot of videos that explain math in a really intuitive and you know, interesting way. And if you go down into the comments, you see a lot of people posting comments like, um, why am I watching these math videos instead of doing my math homework? Hmm, I wonder why. So one way to be more engaging with math is instead of uh, starting with a formula and then, or a tool and then explaining how it can be used, start with a problem or a goal. And then either by trying to figure that out, let the formula emerge on its own, or at least use the formula to solve that. And an example of this is instead of teaching geometric tools and then explaining that they could be used to build a chair, you start by challenging students to build a chair, and then you give them the geometry they need to build the chair. So I challenge teachers to teach more deeply. Not, and by this, I don't mean more word problems with 50 watermelons. I mean uh, projects that utilize math but aren't fully theoretical. One example of how I do this is I do a lot of programming and robotics, which use math very heavily. And in addition to giving me the understanding of the math that it uses, I can even create my own formulas and algorithms that suit what I'm trying to do. So I encourage everyone to go ask a question. It doesn't have to be useful. It can be something completely useless and um, even ridiculous. but um, just go ask a question, and you'll probably use math along the way. One example of a time I've done this is once I was watching a TV show, and the moon was broken up into a bunch of chunks. And one of the ch chunks came flying down and collided with the Earth. And uh, everything caught on fire, and a bunch of people died. But overall, not that much happened. So this seemed suspicious. So I decided to calculate um, what would have actually happened. So uh, using the um, um, amount of time it took the chunk to hit the Earth in the show, as well as the approximate size, I calculated the total energy um, in that collision. So it turns out it was 56 decillion joules, or 56, followed by 33 zeros. 
That's 10 trillion times the energy of the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs. 200 quadrillion of the most powerful nuclear bomb ever made. That's a pile of nuclear bombs three times the cruising height of airplanes. Over the entire continent of Australia, if you were to place one of those, every second it would take 8 billion years to build that pile, which is over half the age of the universe. So I think it's safe to say that that probably would have cracked the Earth like an egg and splattered it across space. Questions like this can be both fun and give a lot of insight into math and the universe as a whole. And along the way, you might even discover that M is the most interesting and useful part of STEM.